Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery from Golden Mate. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have. All right, and we have a box within a box. All right, right on top we have the user's manual and a couple of lugs. Lift up the uh, styrofoam and then we have the battery. All right, and here is the battery. Uh, with true Golden Mate fashion, we do have these uh, orange cap and they have separate uh, washers and lock washers with them. Uh, the terminals are uh, color coded, which is good to see. And there's also a plus and minus sign. So it's very clear on your positive and negative. The measurements for this battery are right around 13 inches in length. A little under nine inches tall. If you include the uh, caps, it's about uh, nine and a quarter inches. And the battery is roughly seven inches deep. And this thing weighs in at 28.6 pounds. So it's a little bit heavier of a 100 amp hour battery than I'm used to. Uh, there's a little bit of information on the side, but it is your typical 12.8 volt nominal lithium iron phosphate battery. That means that you should charge it up to between 14.2 and 14.6 volts. Um, you should charge it at 20 amps. That's the, uh, the, the recommended charge rate, but you can charge it up to 50 amps uh, with a 50 amp charger. And that will charge this battery from zero to 97% in two hours. Um, it says that it does have a 100 amp discharge rate uh, constant and it has a five second 200 amp discharge rate, which we'll be testing in a little bit. Um, it also says that it is IP67 rated, which means that this thing would be perfect uh, for your marine environment. I see that there are little caps right here with little screw holes. So we'll be taking the top off of this later and seeing what they have inside. But the first thing you should do with your battery is check the voltage at the terminals to make sure your battery is operational. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, and our voltage is 13.32, which is a little bit higher than I was expecting. I'm usually expecting between 13.1 and 13.2, but 13.3 is not gonna break the bank. And this Golden Mate battery also comes with its own app. In the manual, you can find a QR code to be able to download it. So I'll go ahead and um, scan the QR code, get the app installed, and then we'll see what that has to offer. Okay, well, I got the app installed, so let's go ahead and put it up on the screen. And you can see I've already connected to the battery, and this is what the information shows in the app. In the app, you can actually see the voltage at 3.3, the current and the power, which we don't have any because there's nothing going on with the battery. The rated energy is 1024.1 watt hours. Uh, the time, I, I'm guessing that is the time to charge and discharge. There is also charging and discharging states, so that will probably light up when we go to start charging this. It also shows you the temperatures in Fahrenheit and Celsius, which is pretty nice. And then at the very top of the screen, you can see that it shows us we have a 77% state of charge. And it has that fun little uh, animation going on with the battery and such. And then if you click on Bluetooth, it takes you back to your list of batteries. Now I say list because you can actually connect uh, 16 of these batteries together. Four in series and then those four series is times four in parallel. So it can give you actually a 400 amp hour, 48 volt battery bank. Okay, so now with the app on the screen, let's go ahead and start charging this up. I'm gonna go ahead and use a 20 amp lithium iron phosphate charger. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna charge this all the way up to 100%, and then I'm gonna do a discharge test to make sure that we do have the 100 amp hours that they claim this holds. So let's go ahead and put this positive on here and watch the app to see what changes. There we go. It looks like it took about two seconds for it to kind of trigger on, but you can see that the voltage is now 13.6. The current is 19.9 amps. That means that's a power of 270 to 272 watts. 
Uh, the rated energy is 1,056 watt hours. And the, it says full of time. <laughs> it really should be time till full. But anyway, uh, it looks like it's gonna be full in about an hour and 13 minutes. And you do see that the charging state, the, light, the little light bulb did turn on, so it shows that it's charging. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this charge up all the way. Again, do a discharge test and I'll be back with the results. All right, well, the capacity test is done for this Golden Mate 12 volt battery. And you can see by the graph here that the, uh, the voltage curve is really good. I mean, it starts off the first 20%, you're still at almost 12.9 volts, which is really good. And all the way down to 95% of the capacity of the battery, uh, you're still looking at 12.1 volts. So almost the entire capacity of this battery is gonna be between 12.9 and 12.1, which is perfect for what you wanna use it for. Um, down here, you can actually see the average voltage is 12.66. Now these are supposed to be 12.8 volt nominal batteries. But with this graph, I wouldn't be concerned at all that the average is only 12.66. And also you can see the capacity was 102.16 amp hours. So it did get above its 100 amp hour capacity rating. So next we're gonna go ahead and test the high amperage of this battery. All right, well the high amperage test is all set up. We have our Golden Mate battery right here. It's connected to a 5,000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter from MX Moonfree. I have a voltage meter and an amperage clamp going on. And let's go ahead and pull up the app on the screen so you can see exactly what's going on there as well. You can see that the voltage on this meter shows 13.41 and the app shows 13.4, so they are very accurate. On this side, we have a 1000 watt uh, heat gun and our new wave induction cooktop. That's gonna be our loads. All right, I went ahead and set up a timer because we're gonna set a timer for five minutes to make sure that this battery can handle 100 amps uh, for five minutes. All right, I just turned on our inverter and you can see on the app, it's taking about one amp. So that means that this inverter on standby is taking about 12 watts. So let's go ahead and turn on the heat gun and get this test started. All right, you can see on the app that the current is uh, at about 100 amps right now. And on this amp clamp, it actually shows 105 amps. And uh, let's see, the voltage on this meter shows 12.28. The voltage on the app shows 12.2. So again, those are very accurate. Let's go ahead and start our timer. And we'll go ahead and let this 100 amp test run for five minutes, and I'll come back to give you results. All right, well, it's been five minutes and you can see that we are still pulling 104 amps. Uh, let's see, this amp clamp says 107 and the voltage on my meter still says 12.2. And on the app, it actually is fluctuating between 12.1 and 12.2. So everything looks like it's just fine. And actually on the app, you can see that the temperature uh, is only 25 degrees Celsius which is 77 degrees Fahrenheit at the MOSFETs. So the battery really isn't even that hot after five minutes. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start cranking it up to see when this battery will actually shut off. Now it does say it can do 200 amps for less than five seconds, but I wanna see what happens between 100 and 200. So I have a couple of 200 watt heaters here. We're gonna start turning those on and then we'll move over to the new wave and we'll try to jump it up as slowly as possible. So first, let's go ahead and turn on one heater. All right, our amperage you can see on the app is climbing to 113, 117 amps. It's now up to 126 amps, 130 amps. And now the heater is starting to actually warm up, so it's starting to go back down. All right, so it looks like we're doing 123, 125 amps right now, and it is having no problem. It's still on. So let's go ahead and turn on another heater. This should jump it up to over 150, 160 amps. 145 amps. 153 amps. 
Temperature on the MOSFET still 27 degrees Celsius. That's about, uh, what, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so still nothing. All right, looks like we've leveled out at about 143 amps right now. So now we're gonna go ahead and click on this new wave right here. Let's go ahead and do um, 600 watts on high. We'll turn these off and turn this on as soon as I can to try to keep it in line. All right, the current is now 170 amps. The time is seven minutes, 55 seconds, and we're running 170 amps. We'll wait until this says 8.30 before we put something else on there. Yeah, so far it doesn't care what happens between 100 amps and 200 amps. So, okay, it's 8.30, so let's go ahead and turn the heater back on. This should jump it up to 200 amps. And there you go, 200 amps, actually it was 201 amps, uh, the system shut off. And at the top of the screen, you can see that it says uh, DOC protection. So I'm guessing that's uh, discharge over current protection. All right, it's been 11 minutes. So it's been over, uh, it's been over two minutes since the protection went in place. And on the app, it still says, it still says 13.2 volts, but at the posts, it shows two volts. So the battery is still shut off. And I don't know when it will actually come back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wake it up. There we go. And it looks like as soon as I woke it up, the, uh, the alert on the app uh, went away. Well, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this battery and I'm gonna put it in a 12 volt refrigerator and drop that thing down to like 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's probably like what, negative two or negative three degrees Celsius. Uh, and I'm gonna leave it in there for 24 hours just to see if the low temperature charging protection works. And it'll be interesting to look at the app to see what the temperature is before the test to make sure that it is below the point of no return. You know, that app should show that it is zero degrees Celsius. And so when we test it, it should not charge. So I'll be back tomorrow. All right, well, um, I've had this uh, Golden Mate battery in this Ico refrigerator for the past 24 hours, and I just opened up the app. Let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, you can see on the app, well, actually when I first opened it, it said that every single temperature measurement inside was 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, right on the edge of whether it was going to work or not. So I went ahead and just turned this thing down to zero and it's been slowly cooling for the last half hour and now you can see on here that it's actually uh the mosfets are at like 30.2 degrees fahrenheit uh which is like negative one degree celsius um and then it says e1 is another 30.2 and also the temperature sensor number one is at 30.2 but the, all the rest are at 32 degrees fahrenheit or zero degrees celsius but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and try it because I wanna know if this is gonna trigger with just one, like with just the MOSFETs being under temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it. If it tries to charge, I'll probably go ahead and just throw it in the freezer again after we uh, open it up and look inside. So let's go ahead and try it. All right, let's try this. I've got my lithium iron phosphate charger right here from Lit Time. Right now it is flashing green, meaning it's uh, on standby. What it will do is I'll connect this, it will go to a solid red for one to two seconds, and then it should go to a solid green because the battery is telling the charger to stop charging. So let's go ahead and try it. It's still, you can see the app and it's still showing the same temperature, so let's go ahead and try it. All right, it's charging and it turned off. And on the app it does show an under temperature protection was enabled. So that is perfect. That is about as close as I could possibly get to a battery where the cusp of that 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius would trigger. So I'm very happy that this battery went ahead and shut off. So let's go ahead and actually unscrew these little ports right here and take a look inside. 
There it is. There we go. And you can actually see right here on the top, there is plenty of glue uh, keeping these, uh, looks like dueling eight gauge wires. So two eight gauge wires for the negative, two eight gauge wires for the positive. Uh, plenty of glue to keep them on so they're nice and solid. All right, you can also see that the BMS, the board goes all the way across. Uh, there is also glue uh, man, there's glue everywhere. Everywhere where there's a screw, there is actually glue on top. So this thing is glued and screwed down very well. But another thing I noticed inside, they are actually, uh, they are uh, cylindrical cells. But all in all, I'm pretty impressed with how this BMS looks. I mean, everything looks very clean. Everything is taped down to where it needs to be. So it does have like a waterproof seal right here. You can see it on the inside. And now the only thing that concerns me about the internals of this battery is that these two eight gauge wires, um, they are perfect for up to 100 amps. If you put these two eight gauge wires together, it really does equal out to be about a two gauge wire. And a two gauge wire can handle, you know, right around let's just say 100 to 105 amps consistently with no problem, up to five meters. Now I know this is a lot shorter than five meters. This is less than, you know, this is less than a foot. But with my testing, this battery would not shut off until it got over 200 amps. So this wiring is really only made for, you know, 100 to maybe 120, 125 amps before it might start to fault. That's why this battery says it can handle up to 100 amps continuous because of this right here. Don't run this thing just because it can do up to 200 amps continuous. Don't do it. Only go up to 100 amps continuous. All right, so what do I think of this Golden Mate 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, when it comes to all the testing I did, I would say it passed. It gave us 102 plus amp hours. And when it came to the cold temperature charging test, I mean, I put this thing to as close to the edge as possible and it's still triggered. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, the high amperage test, it handled 100 amps for five minutes with no problem whatsoever. Um, but it really didn't stop anywhere between 100 and 200 amps. But right at that 200 amp threshold, it did shut off. Looking at the inside, um, I like the fact that there are screw holes where you can take the top off and look at the inside, but that by no means makes it user serviceable. I don't understand why they chose to be able to take the top off when the fact is they don't really have an option to be able to swap out one of those cylindrical cells or swap out the BMS or anything like that. Um, also, the wiring inside does match with the 100 amp max continuous that it says it can handle, but it does not handle the 150 continuous that it could possibly do. Uh, the wiring inside would be the faulting point if you were to run this battery for a continuous use of over 100 to 125 amps. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll have a link to this item in my description along with anything else I used. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. Thank you again and have a great day. Bye-bye.